So now that we have two triangles, I think it's a good time to point out how OpenGL knows to render triangles here. I just kind of threw this GL triangles down here, which is a preprocessor de defined uh, enum. If you Google GL draw arrays, you'll see there's several different values we can pass in here, and they each mean different things. I highly encourage you to do that. But the triangles, when we say triangles, it means every three verts makes a triangle. So here is a triangle. Here are three verts. That makes one triangle. And, oh, okay, here's another three verts that make a triangle. So the order of these verts matter. If I mix and match these elements up, I could possibly not get a triangle. I'd, I'd connect the dots differently. So when we tell OpenGL to draw something, we're essentially telling OpenGL, hey, here are the verts, and this is the order. Now, this works great and dandy, but there's a problem with it I pointed out in the last video. We have this 0, 0 vert which happens to be right here, and then, oh look, it's duplicated right here. Duplicate data, generally not a good idea, especially when we do 3D models with vertices that are shared amongst several triangles and that sort of thing. We'll get a lot of redundant data. So the typical way to solve that is with indices, or index buffers, or element arrays. Those are all different names for the exact same concept. Let me see if I can drive that home. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to delete one of these redundant vertices. It doesn't matter which one. I can delete any one. I'll control L on that line and delete that one. And then now let's bring our window back up and let's label what vertices we have here. So first of all I'm going to draw the vertices. Here's a vertice. Okay, that's vertice 0. Is that 0, 0? And then vertice 1 Okay, is that 1, 1? We put that there, and then if I remember right, negative 1, 1, that's up here. So I'll actually label these. This is vertice 0, vertice 1, vertice 2. This is 2, and then negative 1, 1 is down here, so this is vertice 3. And then our last one is right here. This is vertice 4. Well, now we don't have six vertices as we did prior, but when I, if I re-ran this, OpenGL would get confused. It's like, okay, well, well, you didn't give me that much data, so maybe it rendered one triangle, maybe it just error out. I don't really know. So when you describe your data to OpenGL and or DirectX, doesn't really matter, to the graphics card in general, we're basically saying here are all of the dots, the positions in space, and then we also need to describe how they are connected. When we did GL draw arrays with GL triangles as the argument here, that means, hey, every three verts makes a triangle. That's how they're connected. But now that I've re removed the redundant vert, instead what we need to do is use an index array or an element array. It's two terms for the same thing. So how are we going to connect these? Well, it's going to be vert 0, 1, and 2. So vert 0, 1, and 2. That makes a triangle. And then vertices 0, 3, and 4. 0, 3, and 4. That makes another triangle. Now I could have said 4, 0, 3, or I could have said 3, 4, 0. It doesn't really matter. As long as the uh, winding order is the same. And even what we're doing right now, we don't need to worry about winding order. But we will when we do culling. Okay, so two main things to be concerned with. One, where are the positions? Two, how are they connected? Well, this is how they're connected. And we need to tell OpenGL to use these indices as our connection points. Okay, So yes, this is a float array. But really, you can see how I've grouped two floats into one vertex. So all, now all of a sudden, I can kind of look at this as a vertex array. And I told OpenGL that every two verts or two floats makes one vert. So that's why I can get away with that. We need to describe these vert positions to OpenGL. And the way we do that is the exact same way we did it with the vertex information. We we do it with buffer objects. So let's go down here and I'm going to say GLU short. And in the next video I'll tell you why I'm using a short. But for now it's just it's an integral number. It can be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's unsigned. Uh, we'll say indices. Ray gets, uh, I just have to type these out again. 0, 1, let me move the mouse out of the way. In fact, I'll actually group them close together without spacing uh, per triangle. So our second triangle is 0, 3, and 4, like so. So there are 
our indices. We need to send them down to OpenGL exact same way we did with the vertex information. We need to do it with creating a buffer, bind the buffer, and send the buffer data down. So let's, uh, I don't want to reuse this buffer ID because this is our vertex buffer ID. In fact, I think I'll change it to vertex buffer ID just because we now are going to have more than one one buffer and I want to be explicit about which int represents what. So GL uint index buffer ID. GL, please gen buffers for me. Gen buffer. I need one buffer and please stick the logical number that you assign to that buffer into index buffer ID like so. Okay, sometimes this is called the buffer name. I don't know why they call it a name because it's a number. Uh, and then now I need to say gl bind buffer just like we did before with the vertex buffer, gl array buffer, but instead I'm going to say gl element array buffer. All right, let me actually draw this out one more time because I think it's kind of hard to wrap your head around these buffers and binding points and that sort of thing. Let's let's just step through this one more time. When I say GL gen buffers, that creates a buffer object, much like an object in object-oriented programming that stores all the state information that you need to know for a buffer. Okay, we just generated this buffer and we have two binding points. All right, one binding point that we do in blue here is GL array buffer. And another binding point, I'll just draw right here, but I'll put the text right here, is GL element array buffer. Okay, we, we created this buffer, this vertex, this buffer that's logical number is stored in the vertex buffer ID, and then we turn around and say, hey, bind it to the GL array buffer binding point. So it's bound right there. And then when I turn around and say GL buffer data, I'm saying, hey, send this data down to whatever buffer is bound to the GL array buffer binding point. Well, here's the GL array buffer binding point, and here's the buffer that's bound to it, so we'll send this data down to this buffer. And it's actually, that's when the actual RAM for the actual vertex float information gets created, sent to the graphics card, and then this buffer object keeps track of that RAM. Well, look, we're generating enough, another buffer here. So when we say GL gen buffers and store its name or logical number inside of index buffer ID. Here it is. It's created right here, right there on my screen. I'm sure of it. <laughs> Could be anywhere. It doesn't really matter. And then I say, hey, bind buffer to the GL element array buffer binding point. This point, not this point, this point right here, I want you to bind the buffer that you gave back to me in the index buffer ID like so that will connect this buffer to the element array buffer binding point. I'll make that binding point nice and big. And then again, we just turn around and say, okay, GL buffer data, uh, which buffer do you want to do? Well, I could say array buffer, which would send it down to this buffer, but no, we want to send it to this buffer. So send it to the buffer that's bound to the GL element array buffer binding point. And how much data is there? Well, it's the size of this array, so size of indices. And I can get away with that because indices is, the compiler knows the size of this. It's allocated directly on the stack. The next argument is the actual data. So indices is simply an alias name for the first byte in this array. And so OpenGL will copy this, this many bytes from that address. And then again, our, our hint is, hey, you know what? I'm only going to send this down to you once, so stick it somewhere fast if you want to. It's simply a hint to OpenGL. Well, that call right there will copy these shorts to this buffer, and at that point, OpenGL says, oh, we actually need, we need memory for this data that you're sending to me, so I'll create that memory, I'll copy this data down, and I'll keep track that this buffer object is associated with this actual buffer. Whew. Well, I'll say that 10,000 times. I know that was, hopefully that was a review, but these binding, these buffer binding points can get confusing. They're, they're just another level of abstraction away from the buffers. Well, now that we have that data down to OpenGL, we need to tell OpenGL to use this data to draw. So instead of saying GL draw arrays, 
which goes off the data inside the vertex buffer and relies on the order of that data. Instead, I'm going to say, uh, let me comment this one out, and I'll say GL draw elements right here. And then the mode, well, again, they're triangles. Okay, Each three shorts represents a triangle, so GL triangles. And you can do triangle fans and triangle strips. I highly encourage you to go look up the differences between all of those. And then the next argument is how many how many elements? Well, it's still six vertices, so there we go. And then the type, well, the type here is not the type of the data that's stored inside the vertex array. Remember, we described that type right here. We said each vertex is made up of two floats. Well, the type here is, hey, what? you gave me this data, but I don't know exactly what data type it is. Well, it's a GL unsigned short. Okay, each one of these is an unsigned short because I used a GLU short and that's what I sent down to you when I did GL buffer data. And then this void star pointer, it looks like it's a, I could pass it a pointer to some elements to draw when in fact actually it's, it's an offset into the element array buffer. And right now everything's at zero so I'm actually going to pass null here. Or you know what, I'll just pass zero. It, it looks like a a pointer, but it's really an offset position, and that's kind of frustrating. But the reason we have that is defined like that is because this is a very old function, and I don't want to go into the history. Let's 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 control F5 and see if this actually works. I'll probably get a link or error because it's still running in the background. It is all right now. Control F5. There you go. We still have our triangles. If I can line those up with the dots I drew originally. And very good. We're, we've eliminated, can I get rid of this? I think we can get rid of this. We've eliminated the redundancy in our vertices. We no longer specify the zero, zero position twice. Instead, we specify it just once, but we use it twice. We use it once here and we use it here using an index array. And we get the exact same triangles. Again, as a review, We've defined where the positions are using this array, and we defined how our positions are connected using this array. We have to tell the graphics card how they are connected. Uh, just for tickles, we can change it up a little bit. Let's, let's uh, instead of drawing from 0, 1, 2, let's draw from 3, 1, 2. Can you think what that's going to do? How is, the, how is this going to be different when we draw from 3, 1, 2? Well, if we do that, then we essentially get a triangle from 3 to 1 to 2. And then it all always connects the last two vertices there. And it'll fill this all in with white. So instead of 0, 1, 2, let's say 3, 1, 2. 3, 1, 2. Control F5, build and run. And there you go. We we filled in our, <laughs> that doesn't even look like a triangle, but it is, it's two triangles. Here is our first triangle, here is our second triangle. So again, I know I'm beating a dead horse here, but you describe to OpenGL the positions of the vertices, and then we also describe to OpenGL how they are connected. You can connect it however you want to. If you grew up with coloring books and connecting the dots in coloring books, it's the exact same thing.